Who's there? I didn't expect anyone to be walking the castle gardens this late at- Oh! It's you! What are you doing out here? It's past midnight. This is hardly the ideal time for a stroll through the flowers. <laughs> Tending the garden? No. I know the steward put you to work readying the grounds for the midsummer ceremony. I've, um, felt your absence in the castle these last two weeks. <laughs> but don't tell me he's making you toil here trimming hedges and raking leaves even at this late hour. You should be asleep. Mm, it's not all right. You need your rest, just like anyone else. Yes, I know very well how hard you work. You've served in my father's castle since the two of us were children. But you're still a person, not some tireless automaton. I can see that redness ringing in your eyes. This isn't healthy for you. Ah, uh, who cares if the garden won't be ready for the ceremony tomorrow? The lords and ladies of our realm aren't so frail and fragile that they'll drop dead because they have to look upon a few overgrown bushes for a moment or two. Besides, your needs matter no less than theirs. Don't ever say that. You are not just a servant. Sure, you are a servant, and I'm very grateful for everything you've done for us. But you're also my friend. And besides, servants or not, you're still a human being. And you're still worthy of respect. Even if you didn't grow up in a gilded cradle and nurse at the bosom of a duchess. As if nobility is all that matters in the world. Well, then... You can tell him his crown princess says he's never to put you to work outside the slate again, and if he disobeys, then he'll have my father to answer to. Damn the midsummer ceremony, and damn him too. Oh, I, uh, sorry, I, um, I shouldn't have lost my composure, and I certainly shouldn't have sworn. I know princesses aren't meant to curse. <laughs> I confess I may have had a touch more to drink than I should have this evening. <laughs> oh. If only my old governess were still around to see how miserably short the obedient little girl she spent those countless hours teaching manners and etiquette to has fallen off of her lessons now that she's come of age. She'd have a conniption. <laughs> it's just... Oh, I've been having such a bad night, and clearly it's affected me more than I thought. That's why I'm here, in the garden, by myself. The scent of freshly dewed flowers sometimes helps clear my head and my heart. Oh, it's, it's nothing. I, I don't wish to trouble you. You must be exhausted enough already. It would be cruel to add to your burdens with my own. Please, you have my permission to go home to rest. Don't worry, I'm... I'm all right. Um... You... You really want to stay? I... <laughs> all right, um... Thank you. Embarrassed as I am to admit it, I don't know if I can be alone right now. I'm glad you were here. <laughs> um, perhaps we could sit together? Here, set those shears down. They've seen more than enough use for one night. Come, join me on this bench. Oh, where to begin? It's all just one awful blur. Tonight was the first royal ball of the summer. That's where I came from, in case you were wondering why I made such a brilliant decision to wear a spotless white silk ball gown in the muddy garden. <laughs> Not that it's very white or spotless anymore, now that I've worn it out here. Oh, the hemline is already stained with mud, and the briar thorns have opened a dozen holes in the skirt. It was so beautiful, and now it's ruined. I must look like such an ugly mess. <laughs> mm. 
Do you... Uh, do you really mean that? Oh. Thank you. That's very sweet of you to say. Oh, my. Listen to me. I must strike you as so arrogant and oblivious. The spoiled little princess, complaining about her precious ball gown that got a few specks of dirt on it, to a servant who's just spent hours laboring in the field. <laughs> as if I have any right to complain about my problems to you. <sighs> I, uh, suppose you're right. We all have our own problems. And they all matter, great and small. I, I appreciate you saying that. But truly, I won't be cross if you... You mean it. You really want to stay? <sighs> okay. So, um... Where was I? Oh, uh, the ball. You know, I used to love to attend balls growing up. Even before I was old enough to dance myself. I'd sit out on my father's knee watch all those fine ladies in their beautiful silks and satins, and gentlemen in their tailored leather whirl across the dance floor like some great moving tapestry, alive with color. But... The older I grow, the more I begin to see the tears at the seams, the sneers behind the smiles. Ah. Uh. It's also strange and different than it seemed when I was younger. Tonight, I was the guest of honor since, um, well, you know. You don't know? I'm sorry, did I not tell you? You share my company so often, I thought, I thought it was common knowledge. Oh. My father is intent on having me betrothed by year's end. The ball was to be my first introduction to a suitable match from another noble family. I, am. Um, I apologize for not telling you sooner. I didn't mean to keep it from you. We're close enough companions that we ought not to keep things like that from one another. Perhaps... I thought if I didn't speak it out loud, it would somehow be less real. I always knew growing up I'd have to marry one chosen for me. It's just the way it is for a princess. I can't pretend it was a surprise, but I didn't know it would feel like this when the time finally came. Heirs and heiresses from every noble house of note, from every corner of the kingdom, were there in the banquet hall, each manicured and massaged just so, dressed in their beautiful doublets and their gowns with their heavy gems and precious metalworks glittering upon their necks and ears and fingers. They all came to impress. Perhaps it sounds as though it should be flattering, and perhaps for a different princess in another castle... It would have been. But for me, it was all so wrong. I don't know. Oh, don't misunderstand me. They weren't bad people. Most were kind or sweet or funny or handsome and all had their fair qualities. But try as they might, they couldn't disguise their true purpose. Their compliments were genuine, and their smiles were charming, but they all looked at my tiara before they looked into my eyes. When they saw me, they didn't truly see me. They saw their ladder to the throne, their chance to rule one day by wedding me. How could they see anything else? I spent hours hanging on the arm of this lord or that duke or this baroness and having them whisper honeyed words in my ear and offer me another bite of spiced toast, another sip of honey wine as I feigned laughter. I saw them sneak their little glances at my father across the room to judge if he approved when they thought I couldn't see. 
on and on it went, a dozen dances or more, until I just couldn't take it anymore. It all felt so wrong, like such a pale mockery of what love and courtship should be. I felt horrid. I excused myself, complaining of food sickness, and I slipped out the kitchen door. No doubt my father is making some excuse for me as we speak. He'll be furious that I walked out on a night he planned so meticulously, I know, but I couldn't stay a moment longer. <sighs> for all my pearls and fine clothes, I didn't feel like a princess tonight. I felt like a haunch of meat being sold at a market to the hungriest buyer with the fattest purse. Would any of them truly care for me without my crown? <sighs> Let me take it off. Here. Such a little thing in my hand. But am I worth anything without it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. It means a lot. And I know I already said it, but thank you for being here with me. You know, you make me feel like a princess. Uh, what did I tell you? You're not just a servant, you're my friend. Never forget that. You're the only person in the world I feel safe telling all this, truth be told, and, well... Now that you're here and we're talking, I, I'm i starting to realize what I think I've known for a while, deep down. You're the only one I really feel like myself with. To everyone else, I'm the crown princess, larger than life. They treat me like I'm a couple of lots of ink on some royal family tree, not a person. They can only see their future queen and not the girl in front of them. My birthright is like a mask that I can never take off. But you... You were never like that. You saw me for me. All those wild summers growing up in the castle together. Playing in the brambles and comparing our bruises. All those cozy winters curled by the roaring fire reading each other passages from my old storybooks and our silliest voices. All the memories by candlelight, playing those little games of fancy we used to. I'm sure your masters gave you hell for not bowing and scraping enough to me as your superior, but I was always secretly grateful for a friend who treated me like any other playmate. I never wanted to be above anyone. I only wanted to be seen. I don't know how I didn't see it before. Or maybe I did and I just didn't have the words, but sitting here beside you now, I think, I want to be with you. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. The night has just taken its toll on me. I, I'm tired. Forgive me, I've had too much to drink. Oh, please don't think You do? How, if I may ask, how long have you felt this way? Oh, so have I. There was at one moment when I knew uh, there were so many. <laughs> when you stayed up late into the night reading me stories when I was too feverish to climb out of bed, or when the two of us were caught in that dreadful storm and had to spend half an hour huddled between the hay bales in the stable, laughing at our misfortune together. When you gave me that perfect blue rose and that sweet letter on my birthday, I saved it, you know. I still read it sometimes when I feel unhappy or alone late at night. It makes me smile just as wide as it did the first time. I... I care for you so much. More than I have words to say. Could I... have a hug? <sighs> It feels so nice and warm. Oh no, no, don't apologize. My gown had plenty of mud on it already. Who cares about a damned ball gown anyway? 
Oh, I'm sorry. I, I know princesses shouldn't curse, and... Actually, who cares about that either? And princesses can say what they like. <laughs> I don't care about any of their rules. I don't care about fitting into their box. I care about you. I care about us. Just hold me a little tighter. <sighs> of course I'm not a little girl anymore. I'm too old to believe that fairy tales are real. I know we can't be together the way I want. My father would... He'd never accept it. He'd send you away. He wouldn't be moved by my words or my tears. All he'd see is his daughter frittering away her precious royal blood on some worthless servant. He'd never understand. But we don't have to think about that now. Thank you for being here with me tonight. Perhaps we'll find a way somehow. Mm, to be free one day. But for now, let's just sit here in the garden and enjoy this moment. You know, there's one thing I've dreamed of doing for a long, long while now. Close your eyes. So did I. And whatever happens, whatever they say, they can never take that away from us. They can never take this moment away from us. Do you mind if I lean my head on your shoulder? <laughs> Thank you. Mm. This feels so right. I don't know how I ever lived without this feeling. We'll have to get up eventually, lest we slumber and wake in the middle of the midsummer ceremony. <laughs> but we can stay a little longer. Let's just sit together here, just a little longer. <laughs> I hope morning never comes. <laughs>